music, joy, and happiness. Just is what I think about. What am I going to do today to improve my sound system? That lockup essentially became submerged in water. Seeing the time, we're kind of running out of time a little bit. Uh, it'll be done pretty quickly. The enjoyment of the crowd is the main thing. We love a good party, but we're here because we love audio, we love engineering, we love the electronic side of it. It's kind of like a ecosystem of sound. My name's Hugh Williams. Uh, I'm the owner and founder of Sinai Sound System, based out of Sheffield in England. If you've seen the logo, you can see there's a mountain on it, and that represents Mount Sinai. Wow. It's upside down. <laughs> Is it? It's the mountain where Moses received the Ten Commandments. If you read the Ten Commandments, you can basically translate them to don't be a dick, don't kill people, don't steal, don't rob, don't cheat. And just be nice to people. And that's kind of the message that I'm kind of trying to put across through my sound system. Be nice to each other, don't be a dick. My um, history of sound sort of goes back a very, very long way. When I was in Leeds, uh, fairly early on, I um, saw a poster for a night and I saw a name, some names on the flyer that I recognised and I thought I'd go along. That name of the night uh, was called Subdub and as you stood in the queue outside you could hear just woof, 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 woof. You could hear the entire building shaking. That sound system I heard then was a sound system that would change my life forever. That sound system there was called Iration Steppers. Iration Steppers, listen, listen, listen. After hearing it then for the very first time, I was hooked. The longest journey I've done in one sitting was, well, one sitting was southwest Spain to Berlin. That's one and a half thousand miles. That was two and a half days. In 2010, Mark, as in Mark Iration, the guy that owns and runs Iration Steppers, he asked me to come on a trip with them to the south of France. So that was kind of my first kind of in with a crew, uh, sort of learning the ropes and learning how to run a touring sound system. And the actual speakers and boxes that I heard were actually these boxes here. After a period of time, he decided that he wanted to upgrade his boxes and he wanted to get rid of, his, of, of them. And I decided that it wasn't that I actually wanted them at the time. It's just, I was somewhat selfishness. I didn't want anyone else to have them. I didn't want them to be split up around the country. I wanted to have all nine of his boxes, but I made sure that I kept one of the original grills from his sound system. This grill was in front of the first sound system I ever heard. It, it's part of my history. I still find it surreal seeing this even now. It's still find it quite special. And after a few years of doing that I kind of just sort of had a thought like wonder if I could do something like that maybe, maybe I could have a go because I just wanted to experiment and kind of build a few myself and have a go and then soon after I got three I got another one so I could have four so I could have a stack like this we currently have 21 of them all lined up in a line ready to ready to be deployed 
we have a 15 inch uh, base reflex driver here. This driver is a 1,200 watt driver. Above it, we have a 12 inch driver. This provides the, the mid range. And then this up here is a compression driver. And this is, provides the, the high frequency. Effectively, there's five frequency bands split amongst the system. So you've got your sub bass here, you've got your bass here, you've got your mid range, and then you've got your low mid and your top end coming out of the compression driver. And together that makes all the sound. Hi, my name's uh, Mark Akid. I've run a PA company, several sound systems for the last 15 to 17 years in Sheffield, and I'm part of Sinai Sound System. Currently in our new workshop next to the storage space and lockup that is at Dried Works in Sheffield, uh, we had to move lockups because in November of last year, Sheffield hit, was hit by quite a, quite a mighty flood and our lockup essentially became submerged in water to about, about this level, about quite waist deep. And we lost a lot of equipment, a lot of damages, a lot of issues, but we're now basically moved into a new space. It is dry, it is wonderful, and we're slowly starting to rebuild, and this is the current state of affairs. It's reasonably neat, it's reasonably tidy, but still in the building process of getting back to full strength. The sound system scene and music scene is filled with a lot of people who enjoy partying. We love a good party, but we're here because we love audio, we love engineering, we love the electronic side of it and we love doing a high quality job for people's enjoyment. You, you get to see the difference when you do something well. If the audio is of good enough quality, you see a difference in the psychology of the people in the room. The idea is to give the best possible performance for the DJ to reach their, their crowd. The enjoyment of the crowd is the main thing and seeing people enjoy music at the highest level and highest quality is fantastic. We couldn't do it without such a good team. I did my first ever session as Sinai back in March 2014 and kind of it all just kicked off from there really, wanting to experiment and just pushing myself in what I can achieve. venue once and we were there with six hours to kill. The problem was is that the person who had the key to open the double doors to get in wasn't there. So the only way we could load our speakers in was to take another door off its hinges to be able to get the speakers in to actually set up. I mean we were on time but someone else wasn't. The Trinity Centre gig that we did back in February, uh, I was asked by Omar to do his fifth birthday at an event called Time Dance. Three CDJs and two turntables, I believe. That'll probably take up an entire one of these in yeah. addition to that, if that makes sense. I'm sure yeah, yeah, the yeah. Best so we need a whole separate table for them. Yeah, yeah, sweet. If we have that table for Jan one like yeah. about here and then work everything else around according, I believe. Yeah. I think, that seems, that seems like a good show. Yeah. Trinity Centre in Bristol, it's not too small, it's not too large. It's literally the perfect size for a sort of 500, 600 capacity event. The music at Time Dance is not something that traditionally that the sound system was built for, but due to the way that I've invested time and brought new different kinds of equipment for it, the sound system has become a lot more versatile than a traditional reggae sound system. So Sinai is essentially a traditional hand-built reggae sound system. I mean, the boxes were built by my friends, um, but I'm using, in conjunction with that, some of the best newest amplifiers that you can buy, so I'm kind of trying to marry the two worlds together, sort of the, the aesthetics and love that you, people put into reggae sound systems, that you can put your own little mark on it to make it your little touch. But combining that with up-to-date technology to give it a, a fantastic sound. I think it's like a mix between like an old school dub system, but then it's quite high definition and also, you know, it's always being tweaked, like cues always on the iPad, so it's kind of like a mix of like a like a dub style system but also like a like a more contemporary sound system as well because it's not just about turning up to a gig and just playing it there's a there's a lot more to that that you kind of don't see from the outset you need to have the ability to walk in a room and almost instantly think there will sound okay what i was thinking is probably one in that corner that's kind of like a traditional place yeah uh, and then maybe either one there, something like that over there, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, definitely one there. Yeah, sweet. They'll have maybe one stack here, one stack here, and one in each corner. So, yeah. it's, it's mainly they don't want it like encroaching in the middle of the dance floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kinda... If I'm trying to consider that when I'm going to a new room that I've never been in before, I need to consider where to place the speakers for the optimal sound playback. So if we think of a traditional 
box sized room, we usually want to aim to try and stick it in, in the corner on a kind of angle for two reasons. One, the reason you want it in a corner is because the, the walls themselves and the roof, they act as reflectors. But by sticking it on a certain angle in a certain place, you can actually make your sound system sound louder. The problem is, is if you stick that in the wrong place, what you're getting rather than amplification is negative reduction. Rather than amplifying it, it's actually getting quieter. Again, the reason you want it in the corner is you don't want something called the standing wave. If you're unlucky, the speaker wave can go back, hit the wall, and combine with what's coming out the front of the box and create a dip, it can create a cancellation. Another consideration is if you've got more than multiple stacks of speakers around the room, it's the way that they can interact with each other. If you have one single set of speakers, the wave comes off it and it bounces around the room, creating dips and peaks in that space. But as soon as you start introducing multiple stacks of speakers, those dips and troughs become more pronounced around the room. So it's very much a case of experimenting. The difference in this situation was, was because the DJs were on the dance floor and they could actually feel the presence from the bass speakers, they didn't even have them turned on because the main sound system itself was giving them the experience that these normally try and recreate for them, normal environment. In this situation, the crowd is spread evenly around the room. They get to actually experience the weight and the, the presence of the sound system itself. Again, if you're on stage, you're behind DJ monitors and you might not get a sense for how the crowd is enjoying what you're producing. Well, Giant Swan, when they were on the floor. When they were turning knobs, they could feel it and they could sense it, which meant that they were happy and they were jumping about, which then the crowd kind of fed off that. It's kind of like a ecosystem of sound where the sound system, the performers and the crowd, if you get it it's all to work together, it becomes a kind of much more visceral experience, I think. Just seeing the time, we're kind of running out of time a little bit. Uh, it'll be done pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, they'll need to, they'll, 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 by the time they've set up all their stuff. If you just run these cables along the floor for now for sound check, yeah. and then once that's done, yeah. then we can tidy it. Because we'll uh, yeah. that'll take 25 minutes in itself. The problem with any kind of gig, anywhere, time, there's never enough time. You could plan on being at a venue 12 hours beforehand. You could have, you could have your best plan of action there's something that's gonna go wrong. Plans never work to time. The quickest that we can set this up I think our record is about 30 minutes, but that's more for like a traditional kind of DJ setup. When you've got more of live elements, people with different kinds of live equipment, that's when um, you run into problems. I say problems. There's just time constraints in setting things up. This is part of the procedure to reduce, uh, reduce vibration on a DJ table. Quite often the problem, even when I'm using CDJ, sometimes the, the, the bass shakes the table and the CDJs walk if that's on, on the vinyl mode, the bass can shake it and it can... Oh, actually. And it can like, it, it's like, it gives the impression that it's being cued and it all... Oh, sounds like it's skipping. <laughs> so we use these special isolator mats. They, made, they were made by a guy from South End called Tony. It's kind of three different layers. And in addition to that, we use these special feet made by a company called Isono. They're like rubber suspended feet for a turntable, which really help with feedback. Smoke machines, sometimes if they, if someone's been too over enthusiastic with smoke, it can set the fire alarm off and then sometimes the fire alarm turns electricity off. So that, that can happen, yeah. If it can happen, it's probably happened. So this is the heart and the brains of a Sinai sound system. So if we start from the bottom, we can then work our way up to see what we've got. This bottom device here is the, the power distributor. So the electricity supply from the venue or generator or whatever electric we have comes in here. And this is where I can monitor the voltage to see if it's stable. And I can also monitor the current draw 
to see how much electricity the sound system is using. And these three are the amplifiers here that control and power the sound system. There's a total here, uh, a theoretical maximum output power of 100,000 watts, which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, this device here is a wireless mixing desk, and this allows me to plug in all the different devices from the different playback mediums, be it a DJ mixer, be it microphones for MCs and singers, be it instruments, and it also allows me to record in multi-track as well. This here is a stereo valve compressor. Here is the main control and heart of the sound system. It gives me uh, effectively five five-way control. That means there's five different frequency bands that I have hands-on control of to manipulate the sound in the way I see fit. I also have a, a graphic equaliser to EQ the system and multiple auxiliary inputs for plugging different devices like a mixing desk or microphone. It's effectively kind of like having your own hands-on mastering station. The heart of Sinai. <laughs> yep. I'd obviously been to clubs, I'd obviously been to events. The sound system in these spaces it exists as a, as a medium to play the music back to the crowd to enjoy the music that's being played by the DJ. In this context, the difference is the sound system is part of the night and makes the night. Traditionally, a reggae sound system has been seen to be a bit rough and ready around the edges and not suitable for doing large, big gigs on outdoor stages. I've always been about bridging the gap between a traditional hand-built reggae sound system and a super advanced PA with potentially no character. I'm trying to join the two worlds together.